Welcome to the Daily Word Verse by Verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Galatians. Keep in mind, I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible, so if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. Also keep in mind that these Daily Word Verse by Verse studies are uploaded to my YouTube channel, BP The Bible Perspective. That's BP The Bible Perspective. So, like and share these videos and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. Okay, we're in chapter 4, and Paul is going to continue on with his thought. He had introduced, again, a wonderful truth um, that we are sons of God. He's going to expand on that. So verse 1 says, what I am saying is that as long as the heir is under age. Now, let me go back for a moment. And so that, again, we can get the impact of what he is saying. So we ended chapter three, <coughs> excuse me. And I'm going to pick I'm going to read just from 25. Now, I'll start at 24. He says, the law then was our guardian unto Christ so that we could be justified by faith. But since faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have put on, have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed according to the promise. And this is important because you make the distinction to say you did not come through Moses, the Levitical law, law, the law of Moses, all of these things, you didn't come through this way. And you remember in chapter 3, he, he, he makes the clear distinction between law and then the promise that came, that was given to Abraham. So he says, so in the very first verse, Chapter 3, remember, he says, uh, well, not the first verse, verse 6, he says, Just as Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him for righteousness. So, the big question is, how was Abraham saved? And Which is kind of amazing, uh, uh, you know, as I think about sometimes the discussions I have on various aspects of how people think salvation comes. And you just ask the question, how was Abraham saved? Did Abraham have performed good works? Did Abraham join a church? Did Abraham, whatever theology it may be, you go back to Abraham. Paul makes the link here. How was Abraham justified before God? But then he says, if you are of faith, then you are the sons of Abraham. So you're the heir of this promise. So he says, uh, verse 1 again, what I'm saying that uh, what I'm saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is of no difference from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Now, in this chapter, he's going to make he's going to make two analogies. We we'll get to the, the last one later, but two analogies. Okay. Verse two: the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by the father. Now, you look at any kind of life situations, maybe most of us haven't seen this. Um, you might see it in some of the more aristocratic kind of cultures. And um, and even now, you can even say, I can tell you right now, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to say this at the crack. Uh, some of you may be in a church. And I'm going to just tell you right now, especially some of these big mega churches, you may have hope that you're going to kind of rise up, maybe be pastor one day, Certainly, uh, executive pastor, whatever. Oftentimes, I, and I, I say this because you see this all the time. If <laughs> their children understand that if their children, um, they're going to get those spots when they come of age. Okay, uh, so you may be used to train them, teach them, but the children are the heirs. Okay, you see it in business, right? These big. Um, um, corporations, I mean, bought bi millionaires and billionaires. You know, their children are the heirs 
and they're going to be the one to inherit the business. And so you are just an employee. You are serving. You may be a most trusted servant or employee, but remember you're just that. So in a sense, what he's saying here, those who are under the law are only servants. They're only slaves. That's what you submit yourself to. In fact, Paul is saying you are better than that. You are more than that. So he used the illustration that, hey, you could be in the household because you're the son, you're the heir. And then he says, but while you're underage, the, the, the father may appoint a guardian to oversee you. And, you know, when that guard, guardian has oversight, you have to listen to that guardian. But the guardian knows that one day he, you're going to be over him. The guardian knows that. So when he says here, the heir is then subject to guardians and trustees until the set time of the father, meaning the age when that child becomes of age. And by the way, this is the good definition. We talk about the term sons. Um, the Bible tells we are both children and sons of God. Now, what is the difference? Because we are both. A, a, when the word is the, when, the, when, he, when the word is used at, of us as children and it speaks to the blood relationship that we have with God we are born of God okay so by birth we are children of God then we are heirs that we're going to come to being a joint heir with our heavenly father in his kingdom. I, this is going to blow some of your mind, and it should, because of the hope that we have. I mean, just think about this for a moment. This is the awesome and exceeding promise that God has given us. The word sons, and especially when, you, when it refers to Jesus being the son of God, that word son there has a kind of particular meaning. Not children. Jesus was never born of the Father. We know that he is one with the Father, of one substance of the Father. So when it uses the word sons, in Jesus' case, there's a unique relationship. Now understand, we enter into that. By God's grace, he's brought us through Christ into that relationship. So the word son means when that child comes to full age. Okay? When the child comes to full age, maturity, then they share in the business, the family business, the family inheritance. So like if you think about, you know, um, um, a company that says Smith and Sons. So what is it telling you? It's a family owned business. You have a father. Father probably started the business. And then he trained and he reared his children to be co-heirs and partners with him in the business. And that's the difference in the term son. So when it refers to us as sons of God, where we're heading is we're going to be the, the children of the kingdom sharing with our heavenly father. This is awesome. Okay, awesome. So, um, so um, understand this word here, son. That's what it means. Now, Paul is saying here that we are, the promise that we have in Christ elevates us far beyond just a servant. The law only was a guardian, a guardian, right? And he's using that too in, in, in the more of, of spectrum of time, okay? Where he says that um, the law, the period of the law kind of kept the children of God, Okay? So, of course, now that we are born again, now I'm, I'm sorry, now that Christ has come, you don't need the tutor anymore. We don't need the law anymore. 
Now I'm going to pick this up in verse 3 in the next video, so I will see you then.